everybody. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. If you're listening to us for the first time, please like and subscribe and share this. We really appreciate it. We're trying to get it out to more people. We have someone that's came on the show previously talking about Providence College basketball, which I'm a huge fan of, a season ticket holder in general. Uh, so I'm very excited to have this guy on. He has also coached at Maine, also coached at Rick, and this is uh, Coach Bob Walsh. He's the Associate Director of Player Development, Scouting, and Recruiting for Providence College Basketball. And Coach Walsh, I appreciate you spending a little bit of time today. I know the season's almost ready to rock and roll, so thanks so much for the time. Happy to be with you, Rob. That uh, title makes me sound a lot more important than I actually am, so... Uh, but it's good to have a conversation, and we're excited to get uh, get ready for college hoop season. As we get into the conversation, there's been a lot of kind of different things going on, Coach, because of the coronavirus. We have the transfer portals. Obviously, there's a lot of transfers coming in this year, and some guys that were able to play last year, but also since the year was cut short. And there was all this coronavirus stuff going on. They were able to stay. So can you start off by, you know, talking about all the new players and transfers that are coming into Providence College this year? Well, it's a different time for college basketball and college athletics. Like the landscape is changing, whether you like it or not. You know, you can argue about name, image, and likeness, uh, about the transfer rules. Uh, but, you know, it's here to stay. The, the players have a lot more freedom than they used to. So uh, we all have to get used to it. Um, you know, the transfer portal, I mean, everybody calls it the transfer portal. The transfer portal is just the mechanism, but the rule now is that you can uh, you can transfer and play right away one time without sitting out, right? So uh, in the past, you'd have to sit out and that would always make people think about whether or not they wanted to transfer. So uh, we've got a couple of transfers in this year, we have a number of transfers on our team. Now we have Jared Bynum, who came in from LaSalle, or uh, I'm sorry, from St. Joe's and played for us last year. Uh, Noah Horkler from North Florida played for us last year. Last year would have been his final year, except he got the year back. So Noah is now back with us this year. Um, you know, Ed Croswell came in from LaSalle. He played last year when he would have sat out, right? But they changed the rules, so he was able to play. He's with us again, and again, he gets the year back. And then, you know, we brought in uh, Al Durham, who's a guard from Indiana, you know, averaged 11 points a game for Indiana and started for three years in the Big Ten. And Justin Manaya, who uh, was at South Carolina, started at South Carolina. He's a 6'6 six, six combo forward who's a tough kid. So what it all adds up to for us and our program is we're older, right? It's a way to stay older. And we have, I think, eight players on our team who are in their fourth, fifth, or sixth year of college, right? So that's eight players, you know, almost two-thirds of our roster uh, that is, uh, you know, in what would be their senior year. Now, it's almost impossible to tell who is what year, right? Because, you know, the guys who are, you know, seniors this year were juniors last year. They also have that year to use again if they want, right? So a guy like A.J. Reeves for us is a senior this year, and he'll graduate this year, but he can play again if he wants. Um, so there's a lot of unknown with that. Uh, the roster shakeup is something we all have to get used to. The good news for us is we have a veteran team of talented players. We have a lot of older guys, probably one of the oldest teams in the country. So hopefully that'll translate for us. Yeah, so can we talk about that? Because a lot of these guys did come back, and you mentioned a lot of guys that played on Providence last year, but are able to return due to all these new rules. Uh, but there are a lot of new players, uh, transfers coming in, uh, freshmen coming in, and in general. So with that said, Coach, how is the team meshing? I'm thinking as a person that's standing on the sideline, and I know you see this firsthand every day, that since, like you said, this team is a heck of a lot older, there's not going to be that immaturity issues where you might have a guy in that comes in and he thinks his, you know what, doesn't stink, and he's going to be some, you know, top 10 player on the team. And those guys that are already on the team, they don't have to put any guys like that in their place. They already know that because they've been together. They're older guys. Are you seeing that, that this team is older, that there's more maturity? And, you know, people know their roles already coming in. 100%. You're spot on with that for sure. Uh, 
there's a lot less BS, for lack of a better term, in practice, right, where guys are like, you know, the guys that have been in college three and four years and like Justin and Al, for example, who played for, you know, they played for Frank Martin and Archie Miller at high-level programs, they know how to compete every day. They know how to carry themselves. They know how important the weight room is. They know, you know, the value of being on time and getting extra work and all the stuff that you're trying to teach younger guys in your program. So it's one of the things we noticed right away in June when we finally got this group together was that maturity level, the compete level in practice, the stuff that, you know, you kind of count on with veteran teams as far as bringing it every day and how to carry yourselves and how to compete and all of that was there with this team. The other side of it is, you know, when older guys transfer in, well, they came here to play, right? So now you've got guys that they didn't come in to say, you know, when you have a freshman, you can say, hey, you know, you got to wait your turn. You got to develop. You got to get stronger, get in the weight room. You know, we have veteran guys, you know, so you have to, you have to be aware of that, right? Uh, we have, you know, seven guys really that are veteran guys that have played a lot of college basketball. You know, you know, you throw, you know, it's Jared Bynum, Al Durham, AJ Reeves, Noah Horkler, Nate Watson, and then you have Justin Manaya, Ed Croswell. You can only play five, right? The rules haven't changed. So that's part of the balance you have to find is yes, there's a maturity about how they go about things, which is really important, but it's also like, all right, you know, these guys came here to play. So being able to, uh, you know, give out the minutes the right way and keep everybody engaged and make sure everybody knows their role is still a bit of a challenge. I will say this, and I'll give you a little story. You know, as we were getting ready for our first exhibition game against Stonehill, you know, we had been talking a lot about like, okay, who's going to start? You know, Coach Cooley sits down with our veteran guys and says, look, you guys look around, right? There's seven of you in here. Only five of you can start. And, you know, he had a conversation with Justin Manaya, and Justin Manaya's response was, Coach, I'm here to win. I don't care what you want me to do. You want me to come off the bench? I'll come off the bench. I came here to win. And that's a really mature approach. And that's something that, you know, we're hoping is really, really going to uh, be sort of the ethos of our team this year. So, you know, even going to, into the coaching staff, I know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you worked with Coach Cooley during the USA uh, tournament a couple years back. Uh, Blaney was with him uh, when he was back at Fairfield. And after the, obviously the relationship with Battle, he's been there for a couple of years. So everybody's been there for a while. You guys know how to work off each other and as far as that goes. So, you know, how is the coaching staff, and since you guys have been together for so long, really made it a lot easier, I guess, for the, even the players that are coming in? Because it seems like you guys are comfortable together and you'll project that on these new guys. So they'll know that, you know, these guys will have fun with each other. They know each other. They're comfortable around each other. Well, the most important thing with that, Rob, is how well we know Coach Cooley, right, and what right. Coach Cooley wants. So as assistant coaches, you can talk to the players and say, hey, you know, he, every, every coach has their non-negotiables, right? And it's different for everybody. There's some stuff where it's like, hey, you know what, like, you just can't show up late. Or, you know, I, I can't stand somebody who won't dive on the floor. Or I hate somebody who takes bad shots. Or I can't stand turnovers or whatever it is. So uh, the experience with each other is really about understanding what's important to Coach Cooley and what he's looking for out of the players so that we can, you know, when we're doing individual workouts and we're coaching the guys uh, and trying to make them better, that we're putting them in a position to understand what it is Coach Cooley wants. So um, the staff dynamic is terrific. And again, that comes back to who Ed Cooley is, right? Ed Cooley right. is a regular guy who doesn't take himself too seriously, who talks about gratitude every day, right? He understands how lucky he is to have the job that he is, and we all do, and he reminds us all of it. And so, um, you know, the environment that we get to coach in is really as good as it could be because of Coach Cooley. The experience helps us, hopefully, in developing the players to understand what it is Coach Cooley wants to see out of them each individually so they can get on the floor and help us win. 
So the preseason poll came out a couple weeks back. Obviously, UConn coming back into the league after being in the AAC for quite a while. And the AAC is a good conference. You know, you got the looks of UCF. Memphis is in there also. But they're coming back into this league. Obviously, Danny Hurley uh, back you know, as a URI guy, now he's back at, you know, coming into the Big East playing Coach Cooley. We know there's been some history in those previous rallies with Providence College and URI with Coach Cooley and Danny Hurley. But can you talk about a lot of these teams in the in the Big East? Because Providence was picked seventh. Uh, obviously, UConn coming into the league picked one. What do you think? Obviously, this is preseason. Doesn't mean crap, to be honest. But, you know, looking at those preseason polls, what are you seeing as a coach? We don't spend a lot of time on it because, like you said, it's really not that important. And, and, like, you know, the coaches vote, but, you know, I can tell you, like, when Coach – coach Cooley, and Coach Cooley takes it seriously, you know, but he's not grinding it out and figuring, okay, you know, here's what I think where Xavier's going to finish or where – you know, Villanova's a consensus number one. Um, they have, you know, most of their team back from last year. I mean, they're, they're – seniors who who had a year left and they pretty much all of them came back except for Jeremiah Robinson Earl who went to to the league so um the league's going to be a lot older but every league's going to be a lot older you know I I think you got a team like Butler who's kind of been picked you know middle of the pack who has again all of their experienced players came back right you know we're picked seventh but we have an awful lot of college basketball experience and talent and ability on our team. So I think the league is going to be really good. Uh, you know, the history with us, I mean, Coach Cooley has usually um, outperformed the expectations from the coaches poll when we're picked middle of the pack or lower, you know. Uh, so, you know, last year I think we were picked to finish third. We finished fifth. Uh, but it's not something we pay a lot of attention to. Look, Coaches will use it. We'll talk to our guys and say, hey, they picked the seventh, right? That's what they think about it. Us, I think there's a little motivation. The league's going to be strong. I mean, it'll be one of the top three leagues in the country as it always is. And we're going to have to scratch and claw for every win and see if we can get into that top half, uh, be in the conversation to win a Big East championship and get to the NCAA tournament. Uh, Coach Bob Walsh here talking Providence College basketball. Coach, as we go into the interview uh, my question is, you know, obviously you guys just had the exhibition game at Stone against Stonehill, rather. Uh, speaking about that game, what did you see from the players? Who looked good? Who maybe needs a little bit of work? Uh, what was your take on that game? My first take was we got to guard the basketball a lot better. You know, I thought we did a we we did a poor job of keeping the basketball in front of us. I thought we came out a little bit too aggressive uh, in trying to pressure the ball. And, you know, Stonehill was able to drive it by us. And, you know, we made, you know, the terminology we use is we made the floor big, you know, which is we, we were spaced out trying to pressure them and we gave them a lot of room to operate. Uh, obviously, our physical ability, we were able to, you know, overcome uh, some of our mistakes and our challenges and, and win the game. But uh, I don't think it was a great effort uh, for the first exhibition game for us now looks first time we're back in the dunk in a year and a half and uh, here's an interesting one Rob right we have this veteran team uh, we only have three players on our team who've ever actually played a game in the Dunkin Donuts Center right and that's Nate Watson AJ Reeves and Andrew Fonts so there's still a little bit of getting used to for those guys um, you know I think what we've seen so far is you know, Al Durham and Justin Manaya can have a pretty significant impact. Al Durham being a guard who can handle the ball, take some pressure off of Jared Bynum, shoot it, and make plays for others is going to be a really important guy. I think how our guards go uh, will dictate how we go. You know Nate's going to be there. Nate's got a chance to be the player of the year. Uh, Nate Watson inside and, and you know, potentially an All-American. Uh, we have – some toughness and experience up front where we should be able to rebound the ball. We should be able to defend. Uh, if we shoot the ball well, and if our guards can make plays for other people, you know, we have a chance to be, to be a pretty tough out. I want to talk about AJ Reeves, you know, obviously, you know, he's going to be one of the top players this year, you know, 
Is it time, do you feel like, for him to step up and really be that top scorer? He had some real good games last year, and he looked top-notch at times, but the consistency, in, at least in my opinion, wasn't there last year. What's your opinion on that? Yes. That's my answer on that. Is it time? Yes, absolutely. It is. I mean, AJ's a senior. Uh, he's played a ton of minutes. Um, you know, he's got an ability to score and make big shots and he, you, you hit the nail on the head. He's got to get more consistent. You know, it, it's, um, you know, we've got to get AJ better shots. Uh, AJ had an ankle injury last year that, that he was bothered by for most of the year and, and he put on some weight, you know, he wasn't able to condition the way we'd like him too early in the year. He's lost a bunch of weight this year. Uh, hopefully he's got a little bit that senioritis, like, okay, this is my fourth year. And I, and look, I mean, AJ, you know, a couple of years ago, we were going to the NCAA tournament and it got canceled because of COVID and AJ's never actually played in the NCAA tournament. So, uh, yes, he's got to, he's got to step up and be more consistent. He's got to shoot it at a higher percentage. I think we have to get him better shots. Um, you know, I love his knack for making big shots. Like he is fearless, you know, and he thinks, you know, if a guy's hanging all over him and, you know, he needs to create a little space off the dribble and take a tough one, he he thinks he's making every one. Uh, so there's a lot of value in that, but we definitely need to see him be more consistent. He kind of reminds me of a guy that he could be eventually, and I know this was before you got to Providence, but Bryce Cotton. I mean, you look at a guy that could shoot lights out, I mean, when he was there, and I know he played with LaDante, uh, who's on the staff now, and I want to go into that right now. You know, we talk about a guy like LaDante La Henton, a guy that had a phenomenal career at Providence, four years. He played overseas. Uh, obviously, he played in the G League, too. You know, what is it like for a guy that's fairly young to come back to Providence, who played under Ed Cooley, to really give these young guys, and even the older guys, really some some lift and even some good information of you know what it takes to go he went to the NCAA tournament uh I believe that was he was on that team and you can correct me if I'm wrong when they lost to North Carolina that game was a one hell of a game Bryce Cotton had a hell of a game in that too uh but I believe he was on that team too the best thing about LaDante is uh the type of person that he is, you know, yeah. and, and everyone in Friartown knows him as a great player. I mean, 2000 points and a thousand rebounds, right. you know, there's only a handful of guys in college who've ever done that. Um, so obviously his experience, uh, not just being a terrific player, right. Being sort of an unheralded recruit who came in without a lot of fanfare, who turned himself into one of the elite players of all time. And then, you know, had a, had a pro career, right. Which is what all these guys aspire to have. Um, his experience with that can really, really help our guys uh, dealing with the day to day, right? When the coaching staff is getting on you about, you know, you're not running back hard enough. You're not rebounding well, well enough. I need you to defend better. And, you know, a lot of times when you're 18, 19 years old, you feel like, man, they're always on me. Right. And, and Buck is a guy who can, you, you know, give them a little perspective and, you know, we can all do it, but when Buck does it, it's a little bit different because he was there, right? I mean, I never played for Ed Cooley. I never scored 2,000 points. So um, the first first time I ever met Buck, and I knew him just from being around when I was at Rick and he was at Providence, and I watched him. I'd say hello to him. I'd see him in the summer. Uh, but he came in before he took the job, and he introduced – you know, we sat down, and he said, Coach, I just want to ask you a question. He's like, what do you think I can do to help the program? You know, and, and I was like, wow, like talk about great perspective. Like – you know, I said, first of all, Buck, that's the right question. You know what I mean? Like, he's not coming in as a former player who's saying, you know, who's he, he just sort of, you know, resting on his laurels. Like, hey, I was a great player here. I can take pictures with the fans and give a couple of talks at alumni events, and I'm good. Like, he really wants to impact the kids and the program. So having somebody with his experience as a player, as a student athlete, but playing for Ed Cooley specifically and understanding what it takes hopefully will pay a lot of dividends for us. We finish off with the last two questions, talking about this. You know, I know Coach Cooley and the rest of the staff really strive to really, you know, book and make a tough schedule. And you guys always have a tough schedule. This year's, you know, 
just the same old story as far as a tough schedule, not even including the Big East games. Can you talk about that schedule and what teams you're looking forward to playing, Coach? It's really important. It's a good question. And, and what's happened now, which I'm sure you've noticed, right, the Big East, we play 20 league games. Yeah. Right? So, and, and what's, you know, it's all about the metrics to get into the NCAA tournament and to give yourself the best opportunity to get into the NCAA tournament. You know, 20 years ago, it was, you know, go 500 in the Big East, win all your non-conference games, and you're going to be, you know, 18 and 10, and you're going to get in. Um, now it's a little bit different, you know. So, so a lot of teams would play cupcake schedules outside of the of the conference schedule. You know, we're, we're in a Big 12, Big East matchup each year. We're in a Big 10, you know, the Gavit games with the Big 10. So uh, this year we're playing Texas Tech at home, which is going to be – you know, a, a terrific game. You know, they've been, you know, Elite Eight and then National Championship game um, with Coach Beard, who's moved on to Texas, obviously. You know, we go to Wisconsin, which will be a terrific test to get us started for the Big East in, in, in the Gavit games. Um, you know, we've got URI coming in to the dunk. So URI at home, which, you know, say what you want about it. You know about it being from Rhode Island, you know, how intense it is. Uh, and, you know... I'm not sure everyone on our staff loves it because it's like, you know, because of how big of a deal it's made of it. But, you know, it's 13,000 in the dunk. It's a packed house and it prepares you for trying to go to UConn and win or trying to go to Villanova and win. So, um, you know, there's also a balance there where we have to have some home games for our fans. You know, but we're playing a Vermont team, for example, that's been the class of the America East, a league I used to coach in for 10 years, you know, um, so We've got good games. We're always going to try and challenge our guys. Uh, and it's all about preparing us for the Big East. And we want to get to the Big East and have a chance to win the Big East. And hopefully our non-conference schedule will do that. Why is there no Rhode Island tournament? Bryant's really good now. I, I asked them this too. They had a great year last year. A URI usually has a pretty good year. Obviously, you guys always have a great year. And Brown uh, has been up and down, but they've had some decent years in the past. Is that just – is there a scheduling issue? Is there a money issue? Is there a talk about because of the home games? What is the issue with that? Why, you know, there's never been a Rhode Island tournament like that? Well, it's a great question. You know, now there's four Division One teams in Rhode Island. You know, right, Bryant right. came along, you right. know, 10, 12 years ago, whatever it was. So, I mean, the, the basic answer is everybody's got different interests when it comes to their schedule, right? So – what Brian and Brown are trying to get out of the schedule, you know, we're, we're lucky enough. Our league games provide us a ton of strength as far as getting the numbers you need for the Big East tournament, right? Bryant doesn't have that, and, and, and Brown doesn't have that. And I'd be lying. I mean, URI doesn't have it in the same way. And I, I'd be lying if I said it was fair because it's not fair, right? For a team like Bryant to try and get – you know, so so if Bryant were to have a great year and win 26, 27 games, they're still going to have to win their league to go to the tournament, right? Because everyone's going to say, well, you didn't play anybody. Well, the hard part is, you know, when you're not playing the big games, right, that we're playing three or four of them every year and then our league games, you're talking about 24 games, right? So now you want to play a team that's also really, really good but doesn't have the name rec recognition that's going to, you know, really challenge your guys when – you know, there's a lot of value to try and set your rotation early, to try and get guys minutes, to try and so it's just competing interests really in, in what it is. Whereas Bryant may look at it or Brown may look at it like, hey, we'll play any of you anywhere, like let's do it. For us, we got to find a balance. You know, last year we couldn't play URI because of the way the schedule changed, and we were in this Maui tournament, and then we were coming back from Maui. We were supposed to play them the next day, and you know, so. Each individual school has competing interests. Look, you and me, and, and I've been in Rhode Island for a while and haven't been at Rick and been kind of the, you know, one of the underdog schools. Like, I would love to see it. But could I sit here and say, okay, it makes sense, you know, for our schedule. That's year to year, and it depends on, you know, what our other games are and what we need, at, we think, as far as metrics to get to the tournament. So it's something that's worth talking about for sure. I think it would be a full house all the time at the dunk to see that little Rhode Island tournament. And like I said, as Bryant's getting a lot better than they used to be, it's not a cupcake game. 
uh, you know, Brown, like I said, is up and down and URI in that Providence rivalry is always there in general. Uh, last question, and then I'll, I'll let you go, Coach, because this is a question that's on my mind. I'm in Rhode Island right now, but, you know, I've been in Florida for, I was in there for quite a long time. I used to go to that tournament at Disney all the time. There's always a Big East team in that tournament, whether, you know, Xavier's been there quite a few times, but, you know, the list goes on and on as teams in there. How come, I don't know if you have the answer to this or not, but how come Providence has never went to that tournament? I mean, you talk about a tournament, you know, they have URI's been there, uh, Kansas I saw play there. A lot of good teams have played in that tournament or down in Disney for Thanksgiving. Uh, is there, why hasn't Providence been picked or have, have they not wanted to go down there? What's the issue with the Disney? Tournament? No, it's a great tournament. And it's that one's run by ESPN. So there's all right. these different, they're called MTEs, right? Multi-team events, which are exempt events. You know, they don't count as a total of games towards your, your schedule. You're allowed to play in them. So, um, you know, for this this year, we're in we're in you know a four team tournament in Newark. You know, with Virginia, with Northwestern, and Georgia. You know, last year we were in the Maui Invitational. Now it was in Asheville, North Carolina, but we were supposed to go to Maui before COVID. So, um, you know, we've played in Mohegan Sun before, right? right? Which is close and also great uh, team. So, you know, and there's only one Big East team in that every year. So it kind of rotates, and I think ESPN picks. They have different teams from different leagues so I think it's something we'd be open to but there just seems to be other events that we can get into that are marquee events that provide the games we need and in some instances it's either at a better location or the travel is a little bit better and the one thing about that event is uh you know you're not home for Thanksgiving you're playing on Thanksgiving which is a little right. bit different you know we went out to Anaheim a couple of years ago and played in the, the wooden classic that's another one uh, similar timing. So I wouldn't say we're against it. I think it's a terrific event. You're only allowed to play in each event, you know, one of those, one of those events each year. So it's just a matter of fitting it into our schedule. Okay. Coach Bob Walsh, Providence College. Thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Rob, always a pleasure to catch up anytime, my man.